Oh my god, oh my god, look at it go. It's driving itself! It's driving itself! Are you touching the gas? No, I'm not touching anything! And guys, this is no Tesla with autopilot or whatever. It's not a Waymo. This is like a five-year-old Toyota Corolla. <laughs> okay, no, oh, it needs a little help. It needs a little help. Oh, oh, look at it go. Look at it go. <laughs> it might smell a bit like mold, and it definitely isn't much of a looker. But with the help of this incredible piece of technology, the Comma 3X and the open source self-driving software it runs called OpenPilot, this practical commuter car is now in the same class of self-driving as a base Tesla with autopilot, making it into one of, if not the cheapest self-driving cars on the market. I have wanted to try this guys for so freaking long. Dude. And thanks to Vantru, who sponsored this video, sending over a bunch of their dash cams, I'm gonna have all the angles when we show you guys exactly how easy it was to install and what it feels like to have what is fundamentally a cell phone drive your car for you. And did I mention it's open source? You did, but it's cool enough to mention it twice. There's no way that this is it. That is it. This is the Comma 3X, and this black box contains everything we need to turn the car I'm sitting in self-driving-ish. Make driving chill. Oh my God, that's a lot of fine print. Here, let, me, let me read the fine print. <laughs> oh, it actually says fine print. Oh yeah. This is the bulk of the hardware, and it's basically a phone with a Snapdragon processor, 128 gigs of built-in storage, a 2160 by 1080 OLED display, USB 3, and of course, LTE, Wi-Fi, and GPS. The wild part though, is that it's not even a high-end phone. Like, it's about on par with my old Galaxy Note 9 in terms of the performance. What isn't on par with the Galaxy is, of course, the cameras. It has two 180 degree lenses, one here and then one on the back in order to give it a 360 degree view and then also has a narrow field camera to see far ahead. It's cool that it's got the Comma logo on the back. Yeah, they actually do all the electronics assembly and design in the USA and they even have their own SMT line in their office where all the circuit boards are made. So this hardware is fully custom and apparently they can make up to 500 of these things a week now. It's not cheap. I mean, a thousand US dollars is, uh, is a pretty hefty price to ask for like a Note 9 tier hardware, but they are operating on a really small scale and on a hardware product that's made in the USA and fully custom, well, it seems pretty reasonable, especially when you consider the software development that goes along yeah. with a hardware product. I mean, it's open source, but they're pushing most of it. And to their credit, they are costing down the product over time, yeah. rather than the other way around, which yeah. goes against the industry trend. This used to be more expensive. You don't get a ton in the way of accessories. We've got a Toyota A adapter harness, yep. USB-C, which just Connects goes right the, into the, there. The right angle USB-C here. That's what connects to the car. And then what is this? Uh, that also connects to the car, but is technically optional. That's like the power adapter. So if you have this in your car and you want it to be like uploading training data at night, you need that. That keeps it powered. Oh, super cool. You can also GPS track your car with that plugged in and it off and like remotely check in on it. Oh, that's super like, cool. Like a Tesla. You have to pay money for that. We'll get into that later. So this is all we need? Yeah, uh, all you need, because I don't think it's fair for me to try to install this. I work on cars all the time. I want to see how a normie would do it. There's instructions. They're not specific to this car, but there's instructions. Cool. Step one, remove the rear view mirror cover trim. This is where I'm gonna stop you. Wait, 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 That's wait, wait. That's step one. I don't care. So, like I said, I work on cars. I don't know why these instructions don't include this, but step one of working on any car's electronics is disconnecting the battery. It probably doesn't matter, and to be clear, for our use case, I'm actually not gonna do it because I wanna see what happens. But if you're doing this at home, you bought this thing, just disconnect your battery first. Wait, wait, stop for a second. Trim tool? No, I got it. No, damn it, I, there's a sponsored thing, you f Luckily, our sponsor Vantru includes a little trim tool with their dash cam, so you can use that to get it off. It said to slide down, I think. Oh, here, this part, take this part off. There you Boom, go. there we go. And then now- I thought I'm supposed off. to do it. Oh, sorry, yeah. Hey! Hey, how you doing, buddy? Connect car harness into the camera. Oh, so I am disconnecting my existing camera. You're putting it in line. To be honest, I don't know if it actually talks to that part of the car at all. It definitely doesn't like analyze the feed, that's for sure. I did see on like a Reddit post that someone said on cars that have blind spot monitoring that it will stop a lane change if it gets detected on there, but I don't know if that's supported on all the cars. That is kind of the thing about open source solutions is, yeah. It's got a feature set, some of which may be implemented. Yeah, to their credit, a lot of it is just reverse engineering. Like they just have to basically f around and find out. Yeah, well look here, we got a little connect -a jig Uh-huh, and then we put our other connect -a jig right where that one was. Okay, oh yeah, there we go. We plug this guy into here, 
Got a little bit of VHB tape. Oh, they've even got a nice little pulley tab for me on it. Thanks, comma. I don't know if this spot's gonna work, but I expect it there. This is killing my back sitting in here like this. I'm getting so old, damn it. Where's the other? Yeah, uh, oi! All right, here we go. Now I can get in here. What am I doing wearing a sweater? LTDstore.com. LTDstore.com, baby! Now we're gonna plug our power cable into the car's OBD port. A little something like that. So I'm kind of thinking we'll come across this way. Yeah, buddy. Now I'm gonna plug in this power connector, okay? Here's the other side of this power connector. We're gonna cable manage this a little bit later. And then now we're gonna use, Kama's got this funky USB cable that improves the clearance for the back of the unit here. See, it kinda, it's right angle, but it's like going off a weird wonky way. So we're gonna plug the other end into right here. Now, I just gotta find somewhere to put this and honestly, there's not a lot of room. Oh bud, she's on, she's not going anywhere. I don't think I managed to get the VHB tape attached to anything, but it's stuffed in there so tight, I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> Step three, place mount high and centered on the windshield. It looks like you already did that. Yeah, you're supposed to let it cure for 48 hours, so I stuck it on a little early. Make sure all lenses are free of debris. Oh, look at that. I should have got you the apple polishing cloth. <laughs> no, you shouldn't have. Now all we gotta do is pop this bad boy on here, and then this slides into our mount a little something like, here we go. Boom, just like that. Step five, reinstall the rear view mirror cover trim. Oh, I already did that. So I'm done. Pair your device with Comma Connect. All right, let's do the setup guide. This is one of those cases where I might actually recommend connecting to 2.4 gigahertz, just cause your reception might not be great in your garage. It'll just kind of depend on where your access point is. I think I can probably do five gigahertz, but your mileage may vary. Yeah. Or hotspot your phone. Choose software to install. Okay, we're gonna do open pilot this time, but there's actually, you know, like any open source project, lots of people who have other ideas for how it should work mm -hmm. and various forks that have their own strengths and their own potential weaknesses. Yeah, some of them look very compelling and we will try that later. We're actually planning to do a long-term review as well where we try a couple different cars. I really want to see how it is compared to Tesla's built-in basic autopilot uh, and maybe full self-driving, I don't know. And then we also want to look at the other software options because apparently some of them are really good and like add things like you can make it so it follows really closely. Say you're in LA traffic and you don't want people cutting in front of you. Follow like a dick, but with okay. the computer. That's pretty cool. Yep. Uh, we should actually have a few different drivers try it potentially yeah. too. Get subscribed so you don't miss it. Oh, is it almost done? Oh, it's doing a software update now. Yeah. So there is an operating system on it right now, obviously. I can't remember what it's called, but it's Linux based. And what it's installing right now is, it's, it's kind of like an app basically, but that app takes over everything. I can't believe how painless this was. <sighs> like even filming it, you know, so redoing takes and all of that. Dude, we've been here less than an hour. Oh yeah. Like this is very just, yeah, DIY, you just chuck it in your car. If you watched a video of somebody else doing it beforehand and you had all the cables ready and you knew how to take that thing off, you could do this in 10 minutes. Before we drive, we're gonna sign in and we get what? Remote access, 24 seven LTE, a year of drive storage and remote snapshots. If you pay for it. Oh, is there a benefit to signing in if you don't have a Prime subscription? It allows you to look at your drive videos for like the last three days. That's what they'll keep for you. Kind of oh. like a dash cam, or you can pay a certain amount of money to get all of those features and a data connection, mm. or you can pay like 10 bucks a month to get all those features and you use your own SIM card. I don't think that the one including data even works in Canada, but why would you pay for a subscription for like dash cam functionality when you can just get a dash cam from our sponsor, Vantru? We nice. have their Nexus 4 Pro S here, which is their new dash cam. It has triple channel recording, including 4K on the main channel. It's got a remote third camera that's waterproof. You could even put it outside. So you got like a big sprinter van, you could stick it on the outside. Oh, that's pretty cool. As like a rear view camera if you wanted. They use Sony Starvis sensors. You can use their plate picks thing to have better clarity for license plate stuff. Oh, that's huge. It's got GPS, it's got LTE if you want it with an add-on. It's kind of the bee's knees. And they also gave us a few more. We've got the E1 Pro oh. down here, which is a single lens camera. Uh, and then there's another one at the back. That's a 360 camera that even has a, like a 360 action cam mode. You can take it out of your car and use it like a 360 cam if you want. Cool. So thanks to Vantry for sponsoring this and we'll have a bunch of footage of the drive because of them. Okay. Sure, I'll, yeah, I'll open the fire hose. Yeah, give them all that. that just means it uploads more data yeah. for them to train. It's an open source project, but it's also a like distributed training pool. So when you drive, even when you're not using OpenPilot to drive for you, 
it's recording and it can upload clips. And they even allow you, if you want, depending on your privacy settings, to upload the driver facing camera data if you want to help train their driver attention models. Too. I enabled that. Normally, I would not ever put my seatbelt under my arm. You're not supposed to do that, but my microphone is here, so yeah. Are you scared? You seem like a bit tense. I'm a little tense. If we die, there's gonna be so much footage of it. Here we go. Okay, drive above 15 miles per hour. It's Canada, you f Oh yeah, let's change that. I'm finding the interface really intuitive. You just tap it and then it brings up the, the settings cog and then you just... Uh-huh, use metric system. Look at that, let's go. We'll just do aggressive driving personality. No, you know, standard. standard, let's start with standard. Whoa, see look, it's already charting the course. Well, let's get out to the road. So it's very important that when you mount this thing that you put it centered, otherwise your car will like lane keep <laughs> off center. <laughs> Okay, okay. Calibration in progress, 98%. So that looks pretty good. Oh, my Lanta. Oh, Jesus. Jeez. <laughs> Take control. Ah! Would it say the turn exceeds a what now? One thing that it doesn't do yet, when you're on the highway and there's like a corner, it's not gonna slow down based on that. That's a feature that's also like in forks. So they can do it based on looking at the view uh -huh. and also using satellite data as to like the curves of the road. Sure. But you can be on a highway and it can have a pretty aggressive corner and it will still try to do a hundred. But that's also a problem in Tesla's autopilot, so. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's got the line, it's got the line, boys. Oh, we're over the line. Yeah, this is um, not very good so far. Yeah. <laughs> nope, nope. Turn exceeds steering limit. Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. You know what, that might be a thing with this car. The like lane centering cruise control of this car might not have the functionality to turn beyond that. Theoretically, it's detecting this red light, right? Okay, it stopped on its own. My feet are completely off the pedals. My hands are completely off the wheel. Is it gonna go? No, it's not gonna go. Okay, so I tap the accelerator. Is it gonna go? Oh yeah, she's going, she's thinking. Changing that? Uh, yo, it, it, I mean, uh, it changed the lines. It obviously won't signal for you. So it's kind of like driving a BMW. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see how it handles this. Oh, dude, it just drove us into a turning lane. Yeah, okay. I, I had to completely intervene there. And this light is green and it just tried to stop me. <laughs> okay. It doesn't have navigation. There was a navigate feature that they were testing for a bit, but because they're still trying to work on the actual driving model and getting that to be really good, adding that into the training stuff just made everything way more complicated. And so they removed that for now. Let's see if it can stop at the stop sign. Hey. Nice. Okay, but is it just gonna go? Uh, nope, this is me. Okay. I'm definitely finding just driving myself a lot less stressful. <laughs> what exactly is it that made us choose the Toyota Corolla? If you look on their page of compatibility, you know, it's like 300 cars now, which is great, except not all of them are supported at the same level. Some of them don't allow the uh, like auto stop start from a stoplight or stopping at red lights um, at all, even in experimental mode. Some of them only do the lane centering above a certain speed. There's just limitations based on the hardware of the car and how much development has gone into it. A similar reason to why we couldn't just install this into Ploof's car. Like there just has to be support for it. That car has no electric anything. You can't just make an analog hydraulic steering rack turn itself. The car has to support the features to begin with. On top of that, we wanted a car that was cheap. It wasn't right. gonna work in your Porsche because they don't support it. There's, I guess there's not a lot of Porsche dudes that want this in their car. So with Linus being a little bit cheap, I wanted to find what is the cheapest self-driving car we could make. And this was the cheapest one with the full feature set. So hey, a roundabout. Oh God. Let's I, see what I, happens I, in a roundabout, boys. I don't think you should have the turn signal on, but it's, I mean, it's, yeah, okay. No, 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 nope. no, okay, no, I, I, I got you, I got you, I got you, I got you, fam, I got you. Fam. <laughs> well, we're real close to that curb, boys. Oh, we're oh, like, we're like a, oh, we're no, away. no, we weren't. Brother, I'm on this side, I can see. I disagree. Uh, uh, Let's okay. see what it does. Let's oh, see what it does. Oh, no, it doesn't know. It, it doesn't, doesn't know. know. It doesn't know. It tried to turn. No, no. It made the right call. Dude, it made the right it call. It just took too long to figure yep. it out. Yeah, and it couldn't turn that sharply. I actually, I'm pretty impressed by how it handled that. I could see how much better this would be if it had navigation data. Like live navigation feed would make this so much more powerful. Because it's not taking into account that the road is going to turn soon. It's just looking at what the cameras can see. Okay. No, no, Take no, control, no, no, turn exceed, no, 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 steering no, no, limit. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, I got you, I got you. I got you, I got you, okay. 
This is a merge. Too. Okay, so is this just gonna like? Uh, oh, she's might. just going. She was just gonna like plow into the back of this <laughs> Kia. <laughs> it's only lane change assist. Remember? I wouldn't even call that an assist. I would call that just <laughs> sending it. See, this is where it should shine. I just can't believe this is like open source. Right. We've mentioned it a handful of times. I know. But it even bears mentioning more times because that is so cool. Just makes me imagine, dude, like this running on like an, an M4. Okay. No, no, not the car. No, no, I know what you mean. But also, yes, that would be cool. <laughs> what I was going to say, they actually built out support for having an external GPU. Really? So you could <gasps> run like a huge model on this thing. Uh, but the because three. Be <laughs> Literally. Why not? You could have more processing power than like a hardware for Tesla pretty easily. Which, I mean, to be honest, that's the other thing I haven't considered up until this point. This is like a five-year-old smartphone. Is it more than five years? More. So you compare the hardware they're running on yeah. to the kind of like neural processing. Like that's taken off in that last half a decade that we have on modern devices. Yeah. Like with an AMD GPU. <sighs> and... Like they they're using TinyGrad, which is like GeoHot's company, where they're developing like open AI drivers, framework, everything, right? Oh yeah, changed. Oh, are you changing lanes? Oh, dude, that's so cool. That was awesome. It totally warned me. So imagine if you gave this thing like a 9070 XT in an eGPU dock and just like stuffed it in your trunk. Dude, she's she's going. We have to do that. That has to be part three. Man, but just put your hands down. You're good. I, well, you're such a sketch case. Like just breathe. I haven't intervened at all since we got on the highway. I haven't touched the steering wheel at all. Other than to tell it, hey, I want to oh, change lanes. Yeah. Which is totally fine. I know that it's just like adaptive cruise control and lane keep, but like every car I've ever driven with that sort of stuff, it's just like, man, this is, I really, really need to pay attention. Yeah. Because it does just like derp out randomly. And like on the highway, that was, I could have had my eyes closed the whole time. Not that you would or could, but in an alternate universe, yeah, I totally could have. The braking is pretty damn smooth. Really good. I didn't even think about it, yeah. which is honestly the strongest endorsement that I could give for it. Yeah. The acceleration is a little aggressive sometimes, but the braking is shockingly smooth. Have you touched the steering wheel like at all? Or the no, gas brother. or the brake? No, brother. Wow, it's really smooth. <laughs> yep. I would have believed that that was a human. Like, a, like, like somebody a, that's trying to be good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that like gives a about their passengers. Yep. Yeah. Whoa. Dude, it's pretty cool. Dude. Supposedly because this is like actually like a very state of the art, like machine vision, AI, whatever you want to call it, neural network model versus like some of the car ones where it's like just looking for straight white lines or straight yellow yeah. lines. It's supposed to be pretty good at handling like nuanced situations where the lines are faded or there's construction lines or you're in a country where there's places that there aren't lines all the time or in construction or yada, yada, yada. This is awesome. This is pretty like, cool. Like this is so, I, if I had a car that supported this, I would buy this right now. To be clear, that endorsement is not necessarily because- no, I'm financially irresponsible. Yes. But he would buy it to play with it because it's really cool to play with, but yeah. let us at least do the long-term one before we give you guys some kind of solid, hey, we feel this is worth it. And also just supporting this project. I have a really important question though. Oh, God. In your research for this video, mm -hmm. did you check the legality of what we're doing at all? <laughs> it <laughs> depends. So OpenPilot says they designed the way that this system works based on the same guidelines that automakers stick to. There is also some things to consider depending on where you live. Some jurisdictions don't allow you, technically speaking, to have anything obstructing the driver's view. You're not supposed to have dash cams. You're not supposed to have yeah. radar detectors. You're not supposed to have anything on your windscreen. That is a consideration. It's not a problem here, but that's something to check. Here we go, here we go. She's going. She's going just and like that. And there's like cones. Like there's there's no line on that side. That's really cool. It's tracking that line though. Okay, let's see if I don't, this might be too much turn. Let's see, let's see. No, I think she can do it. I think she no, can do it. it's asking you to take control. Okay, all right, all right. She almost did it. Okay, if I, that's interesting. You probably just need to help it a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't actually mention this. It's designed to be like a collaborative thing. So a lot of the self-driving features in other cars are like, as soon as you touch the steering wheel, it stops. Oh yeah. This is meant to be like, you can give it a little bit more and it will it will work with you. I'd love to see, once their hardware gets a little bit more advanced, yeah. I'd love to see them integrate that into their training. Yeah, like, well I think they do. They probably do. Do they? Do. Yeah. Okay, because as an open source project, I'm way more comfortable just like, yeah, sure. 
upload all my shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It totally stopped there, by the way. Yeah, it totally did. That was awesome. That's crazy. That dude. was really fun. Yeah. Check out the video where we put Android Auto in Ploof's car. Oh that was yeah, fun. that was awesome. That was fun too. I wish we could have put this in Ploof's car, but this is also still really cool.